All right, everybody. Uh, here I am, Paul Stetsowitz, uh, Weeks Aircraft, uh, doing another mechanics corner and update on the BF 108 project. And kind of what we're going to talk about today is uh, kind of parts prepping and paint stripping. We've had a lot of questions about how we remove paint and the process of all that. And there's a lot of that that has to be done on this particular project. So that's basically what we're going to concentrate on. Um, before I start all that, I'm going to give a little shout out to everybody that I ran into at uh, Oshkosh at the fly-in. We were up there with four War One airplanes uh, for the air show and I had a lot of people come up to me and telling me how much they enjoy the videos that we do, especially the 108 videos. A lot of people that I'd never seen before. Uh, so it was kind of cool to talk to people and see them in person. So uh, everybody out there watching, thanks for that. But we're going to talk about uh, the 108 and people are talking about of course what we're doing on the airplane and a lot of people mention uh, why we don't actually show uh, some of what we're doing. We're going to try to show some of that today but the problem with restoration and as far as showing a lot of that is it's a lot of it is quite tedious and, and somewhat boring so if we showed you like the whole process you'd be just like looking at you like oh my god this video is just going on and on. Uh, so that's one of the reasons why we don't show a lot of that but we're going to show a little bit what we're doing and Basically what we decided to do with the 108, after looking at the project, we are concentrating on the wings. Uh, the fuselage I kind of hold off for right now. Uh, it's back there, of course, uh, waiting for work, but we're gonna concentrate on the wings. And what I've been doing lately is removing a lot of the internal components from the wing. So what we're gonna show today is uh, taking a part out of the airplane. What we're gonna do is we're gonna remove uh, this uh, push rod here, which actually is part of the aileron system. Uh, on the 108. And what I find interesting about this airplane, this has taken a lot of time. I've taken everything out of the left wing. And it's taken a lot of time on this aircraft because I found that all the bolts that go through a bearing on the 108 are a close tolerance bolt. What I mean by that is that it's a very, very tight fit. If you look at a, a regular, like an American bearing, this is a little bearing that we have here, and a number four bolt, an AN4 bolt, uh, if you put that in the hole, uh, it's pretty loose fit. It's tight, but it's, you can get it out pretty easily. We're finding on the 108 that everything is super, super tight, and I actually have to press out a lot of the hardware, which is taking a lot of time. Um, we'll kind of show you how we do that. Uh, I'm going to remove um, the nut and everything off here. Uh, this is, of course, it's all metric uh, on the airplane. The entire aircraft is metric, and we're just going to remove uh, this bolt. I've actually removed uh, the other end already because that was very tedious as far as getting the cotter pin out and it's very hard to see inside of there but um, we're going to take this out. And as you can see the nut came off it's pretty easy but the bolt is like really really in there. I can't even push that thing out of there. I could hammer on it. Yeah that's not something sometimes you can damage that so we're going to press that thing out of there. Uh, come up with a little homemade press. I use like to use a little C clamp here. We have to uh, knock this out of here. We could try to hammer that out, but it might do some damage to the linkage. So we're gonna we're gonna press it out. I got a little C clamp here uh, and a little socket on the bottom that's gonna allow us to push it out. We're just gonna crank that thing down there and uh, move that thing out of there. Now that moved it somewhat but not completely. Um, so we probably will have to get a hammer. Um, before I will hammer I'm going to back it up with something because I didn't want to damage anything. So I'm going to back that up and I'm just going to knock it through. And you can see how tight that is. The entire airplane uh, has been this way as far as getting hardware out of it. And um, it's just got a, a regular airplane that would just come right out of there. Now that's part way through but now I can't get it out the rest of the way, so now I need to get a punch. So we got it part way through there. Uh, we need to get it the rest of the way, and it's uh, it's still really, really tight in there. Hopefully we can knock out the punch. There we go, it's coming through now. And I'll tell you what, close tolerance, and there it is, and it's out. And that seemed like it went pretty quick, but when you have to do several of these, Especially in a tight confined area like inside the wing, it gets very tedious. It took me probably a good week to get air, all the components out of the inside of the left wing. So from that point, uh, you can take the piece out if you want to save all your hardware here. Uh, as everything comes out, we put it in little bags because all this stuff is, is specific to the part. Uh, so we want to label that and put it into the bag and save all the hardware. Uh, pull the part out of there and you'll see yeah, that is 
push-pull tube uh, for the aileron. That's probably the first time it's been out of the airplane in 80 years. And I know that because the cotter pins that are in the airplane have never been removed. I can tell that just by looking at them. So that part is out. And we're going to talk about kind of what we do with that. Uh, first, we'll talk about a little bit about the hardware. We have removed the hardware out of the airplane. What we're finding uh, with this airplane is that it's very specific, so we want to save it. I'm actually able to clean a lot of this up and reuse it. But if you can't, if you do clean the part up, and we use glass bead or plastic, we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, a lot of times, the part actually is fine. And a good example of that is some pieces I pull out of the aircraft that are actually perfect. The, the, the protective coating is fine. So that's good, but if that's not the case, if the part is rusted, this has to go through a process. And what we do is we'll, we'll bead blast that part and we'll send it off to a plating shop. When it comes back to us, it looks like this. We send it off and it gets, it gets CAD plated or what they call cadmium. Um, this is that silver color. And this is like a sacrificial coating that actually protects uh, the bolt. This normally wears off after many, many years. So this has to be uh, sent off to a plating shop and redone so uh, depending on how the part looks we may send that off to get it replated uh, but that's what they look like but in most cases i'm finding that a lot of the hardware is fine after i clean it up that the original plating is intact so we can actually uh, reuse that so then we're going to go on to the part that we took out and we need to strip the paint off of this uh, this of course has all the original paint it is that uh, kind of that messerschmitt gray that's all inside the wing and inside the fuselage. Pretty nasty looking. Um, it's an aluminum piece. I can tell that just by feeling it. I can put a magnet on it to check it, but it is aluminum. So how do we strip this thing? Well, there's different things you can do. Um, people talk about sandblasting, and you can sandblast. That's basically what I have here. This is just, it's sand. It's like uh, what you see in a, in, a, in a schoolyard. It's a special grade sand, and it comes in different kind of grits. Um, we don't really use this on aluminum though. Uh, sand normally is used on uh, steel and basically uh, during a restoration we we'll only use sand on like a steel tube structure like an uh, uh, engine mount or a steel tube fuselage. If you're doing like a Stearman or a Stenson L1 or a Piper L4, um, you would sandblast the entire thing uh, to get the paint off it. But we wouldn't use that on aluminum. Uh, second option uh, is glass beads. Glass beads is a very, very now, fine, I guess, of course, it comes in different grades also. And that's what it is, it's, it's glass. It's ground up very, very fine. Um, this is good too. It's good on steel parts also and hardware. We use this a lot to strip hardware and get it cleaned up for plating. But again, not a good process for aluminum because what happens with sand and glass is that it's very, very aggressive and it builds up heat as you're blowing it through the sand blaster. A lot of air pressure is going at this 80, 90 PSI sometimes, and it'll have a tendency to warp the aluminum, especially if you're doing something that's fairly thin skin. So you want to be careful. Don't use glass. Uh, what we use a lot of, and I like, uh, is plastic. Uh, plastic media. Again, that's exactly what it is. It's actually glass, uh, plastic that's ground up into tiny, tiny little uh, fine granules. This material is hard enough to remove the paint at air pressure, but it's soft enough not to damage the material. And this is really great, especially for something that has a coating on it. And like this piece right here, I'm not sure what's underneath this. Does it have like an anodizing coating? I don't want to strip that off. Sand and glass will remove that. Plastic will not. So probably going to plastic media uh, this piece. Now the other option is is chemical stripping, a little, little bottle right there. Uh, we've, over the years, have kind of stayed away from chemical stripping just because it's, it's just nasty. Uh, it's toxic. If you get it on your hands, it burns. If you get it in your eyes, it's, it's pretty nasty also. But I have found a company that sells a environmentally friendly stripper. And we are using that on some of the pieces of the 108, and we'll talk about that uh, a little bit later on. But right now, we're going to actually take this to the uh, beading blasting cabinet that has plastic in it, and we're going to show you uh, how we remove some of the paint off of this piece. And before we actually um, strip the paint off of this part, this particular rod has a little bearing on it. Uh, we do not want to blast that. Uh, the plastic really won't hurt it, but you'll actually get plastic bits in there, and it makes it kind of hard to clean out. Plus, what I found is that these bearings that are in the 108 are a kind of difficult item to find. And I'm finding that if I actually press the bearing out, I can clean it up, I can soak it in some lacquer thinner, and I can actually reuse the bearing. It's that nice. 
And what's really cool is, is that they're original bearings that actually have stamp made in Germany. So it'd be cool to be able to reuse all of these. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna knock this out in a very simple process. We've got a little, little shot press here. And we're just gonna take this and uh, lay it on top of another socket that's a little bit bigger than the bearing itself. Uh, we're gonna take a, another socket that is about the same size as the bearing. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna lay it on right there. We're gonna just bring the handle down here. This is a nice little press for doing stuff like this. Need it. And let's see it I go by. Pressure. And there we go. Our bearing is out. Still in good shape. It hasn't been out of there in 80 years, but amazingly enough, it is in remarkable condition. So now we're good and clean. Now we can take this into the cabinet and uh, we're going to blast the paint off of it. Follow me. All right, here we are at the uh, plastic bead cabinet. We have a couple of these cabinets uh, in the shop. This one has plastic. We have another one that has uh, glass. Uh, this is what we're going to use. This one's a little bit bigger, which is helpful because some of these parts are big and long and sometimes you're kind of limited to what you can clean up because it's the size of the cabinet. In this case, it should fit. So. We're going to take it apart. This is a machine. Uh, lots of room. And this machine, like I said, is full of, of uh, plastic beads and the bottom of it, turn the air on. And what it does basically it just siphons up that plastic out of the bottom of the cabinet and it shoots it out of a little gun or a little nozzle with pressure and it will remove the paint. And of course, we're not going to strip the entire part because that's going to take a long time. We'll kind of show you how it works. Um, turn the light on here. The cabinet, of course, has protective gloves on it, so as you're blasting, you're not removing the skin off of your, off of your body. And, uh, so we're going to start cleaning this part up. You can see how nicely the plastic works. It, uh, it removes the paint, it removes the, actually the dirt and grease, it'll take that right off. It doesn't hurt any of the protective coating. You'll see the end of this part actually has a little bit of uh, like a protective coating on the fitting there. And so it's not hurting any of that. And it's just nicely taking that paint off. You can see all that gray paint. It doesn't hurt the steel. It's taking the paint off of the steel nicely without taking any of the plating off. Revealing some of the original marks on the part that were put on it from the factory. A little more pressure here and we can just kind of go down the part. And it does such a nice job and it's fast too. It's all like, like the plastic. It's so fast. If you had to try to chemically strip that, man, it'd be messy and it'd take you a long time. And it leaves the part clean. It doesn't damage anything. Um, but we'll take the part out of here. I'll kind of show you. Um, Alright, so we cleaned up a little bit of the part. And basically, um, there it is right there. Um, still some part. This, of course, still needs a lot of, bit of, a lot of work in the cabinet to get it off. You can see kind of the before and after right there. Uh, removing all the old paint and the grime. And leaving a very nice clean uh, surface. And uh, that's basically the process with plastic media. We're going to go back and we're going to show you some other parts we took out of the airplane that we've actually cleaned up already. And you'll be really surprised at the amazing condition of most of the components that we've actually taken out of the wing so far. All right, everybody, here we are back at the wings. And we have our part that we cleaned up. A um, good example of the finished product, of course, is is the part out of the other wing, out of the left wing, all nicely uh, prepped, ready to go. Uh, at this point, we want to check it for corrosion and things. We'll talk about that a little bit later, but basically uh, in very good condition. I am s absolutely surprised at the condition of some of these parts. I have taken a few things out of the airplane and plastic media them, and a good example of that is one of the uh, aileron little bell crank linkages. And I tell you what, that looks like the day it went into the airplane. Stripped all the paint off of it, pushed the bearings out of it, cleaned up the original bearings, put them back in again. Uh, basically that part is ready to be uh, primed and painted and put back into the airplane. A ton of stamping marks. Every part actually has 108 on it somewhere, which is kind of neat to see the original stamping. Uh, again, uh, aluminum part also, one of the slat 
uh, connection pieces that's been cleaned up, which is in perfect condition. Um, all the hardware coming out is, is really nice. Uh, the main bearing that dries the flaps, uh, which to me is just an absolutely gorgeous part, uh, that was cleaned up. A little bit of plastic I media mean, used on that, even though it was a bearing. Um, but just look at that piece, it's just perfect. I mean, there's an example of German engineering right there. Now, once all these parts get cleaned up, they get put into their appropriate bags, they get labeled. I have a little uh, a board over here in the shop. That is the board for the left the wing. Uh, everything gets placed on that board, so we keep good track of all the parts. So, and then we do this because. A lot of people think, well, as soon as you finish the part, it's going back into the airplane again. It may be a year and a half to two years before that goes back into the wing. I have no idea. And so you have to keep track of all this stuff and keep it labeled. So we do a really good job placing everything on the board. Uh, other part we cleaned up is uh, one of the inspection panels. This is one of the panels off of the um, right wing, I believe. And this part, as you can see, uh, is pretty thin. Uh, this is an aluminum panel. You could have tried the plastic media this, although it would be kind of awkward, but I would be worried about it getting warped because of how thin it is. So in this case, we elected to do a uh, chemical strip, which we're going to talk about. What's interesting about this particular part is you can actually see the remnants of a zero. Now this is actually part of the first uh, Chilean registration that was on the aircraft that was on uh, when Carlos Del Combo had the airplane and it actually etched the material uh, underneath that so that came through after we stripped it. But we're going to kind of show you what goes into um, the chemical stripping process which of course we have to do uh, outside. All right everybody, uh, again this is the other alternative to uh, removing some paint and it is um, chemical stripping. Uh, normally I kind of shy away from this, but there is a new product. Uh, it's actually an environmental friendly paint stripper, which is those two words don't even belong together because most paint strippers are really nasty. Uh, they have a tendency uh, to cause you know problems in groundwater, but this, pro this product doesn't have that issue. You can rinse it off and it's no issue at all. Uh, also, um, if you get it on your fingers and stuff, it, it doesn't do a severe burn. It kind of gives you a mild irritation, but you're going to wear gloves and goggles while you're doing this anyway. So a very rare product. It works a little slower than uh, some other chemical strippers we work with, but because it's environmental friendly, uh, even if it is slow, it is working uh, very, very well. And we've stripped those panels we talked about, and the other thing we're using it on is the horizontal stabilizer uh, to the one way. So we'll go over there and take a look at uh, the chemical stripper in action. All right, so here we have the horizontal stabilizer off the BF-108 and we are chemically stripping uh, this particular part. Now you could plastic media this and I have done that in the past and I probably will have to do some of that on this part. But one of the downfalls of plastic media is it's, it's involved. And there's a big machine that's used that recovers the media. You have to put the part into an enclosed area. You have to build a little, uh, like a little enclosure or sometimes we do it inside of an, a shipping container because as you're blasting, this plastic media is going everywhere and you need to recover that media because the plastic media is very, very expensive. So it's a real involved process. So sometimes it's actually easier to kind of do it this way. And since this product is working pretty good, uh, we are trying it on the horizontal stabilizer. Now, of course, this airplane, like we talked before, uh, has about five to six coats of paint on it. Paint stripper only works where it actually only removes kind of one layer at a time. So basically it just gets brushed on, as you can see, uh, a nasty process. Uh, but then you just leave it, leave, leave it on there, 30, 45 minutes later you kind of see it bubbling up. The advantage so far has been that the first two or three layers on this particular airplane appear to be enamel. And enamel uh, kind of comes off easy because it'll bubble up real easy and it scrapes off uh, fairly quickly. Unfortunately, the last two coats of paint, including the original blue color, we believe is lacquer. A lacquer was used a lot back in the 30s and 40s, and lacquer was really hard to strip. Now the stripper does eventually soften it up, but you have to scrape it off at the very end because it just doesn't want to fall off. And that's what's going on here. Eric has actually started working on this. We have a lot of the layers off already. And basically once it sits on there, we're just gonna take a little plastic scraper and just kind of work the stuff. And like I said, it is messy. You have to be careful uh, with this. And it slowly removes the paint and layer by layer, it, it'll soften this up and get all this off of here. And you just have to be very careful not to get it on yourself, not to get it inside the component, even though this particular stripper is not very corrosive, which is, is good. And so basically, 
a very long process. We talk about uh, why all this takes a long time. This is one of the reasons right here. Just paint removal itself uh, takes a considerable amount of time, especially on an airplane like this that has about five coats of paint on it. Um, so we'll keep working on this, get the paint off of it, get it down to the bare material, and kind of go from there. Now a lot of people say, well, at that point, is it ready to paint? Well, not necessarily. What we find, even with a part that has a lot of paint on it, like this airplane, we still find corrosion underneath the surface. And it's like, how could that be? But there is. Uh, moisture gets underneath the paint. A lot of the products that were used back in the 30s and 40s weren't the best as far as products we have today. So after the part is stripped of all this paint, it has to be checked for any damage, and then it has to go through a corrosion control. And we're going to talk about that and the next step, we've actually stripped all the paint off of the leading edge slats that came off of the wings, and right now they're going through uh, what we call an acid etch pro uh, process, and that is to remove any surface corrosion off the skin. All right, so what we have here, everybody, are the, uh, this is actually the right wing leading edge slat off of the 108 project. Uh, we chemically stripped this, and I'd like that to do that because this is a pretty delicate part. It's pretty, pretty light, and if you try to use the plastic media on this as far as the big machine we have, uh, you may end up blowing this thing across the shop floor because uh, it's a pretty delicate part. So in this case, we elected to, to chemically strip it. So it's all been cleaned up, all the paint taken off, which took quite a bit of time. There was a ton of paint on it. Um, there was body filler in places where there wasn't even a need for body filler, which was kind of odd. Um, but we got all that off also. There was a few minor dings and dents and stuff that we have to deal with. But the next step in this process is to check for corrosion. And again, all these parts do have some light surface corrosion. I've already done the top of the slat, and so we're going to do a little area on the bottom. So we're going to flip this piece over, and we're going to basically show you uh, what the corrosion looks like. And there's a lot of it on the very trailing edge of this slat right here. And it appears either as like a white flaky uh, powder, which will come right off with a hand, and underneath that, it'll be like black. And so what you wanna do is you kinda of wanna work all that out of here. So we're gonna use a, an acid etch. It's a DuPont product, and uh, it's, a, it's called 225S. It's a very, very mild uh, acid solution. Uh, you pour it into a container, you dilute it with some water, I think it's like a 5 to 1 dilution. And we have a little our glove on. This stuff is not really, it's not really going to burn your hands, but it's, it kind of stinks. And so we want to kind of keep it off your skin. You got a little scotch Bright pad, a little uh, mild abrasive pad here. And basically all you're going to do, uh, we're going to take that, soak it in a little bit, and we're going to work it over this spot. And just go kind of back and forth. This is a pretty bad spot. There's a lot of black uh, corrosion here. And basically, all, again, this is one of the things with restoration. Restoration itself is a very tedious, sometimes boring process. And this is a good example of that. There's just a lot of this that happens. Just, you just have to go back and forth, back and forth. And the goal here is to get all of that black out of there because that black is corrosion. And if you don't get that out of there, that's just going to fester in there. If you paint over it, it's just going to come back through again. It's going to mess up your paint job. And the whole goal here is not only to, to uh, make the airplane presentable, uh, it's also to preserve the airplane. We want this airplane to last another 80 years. Uh, so we want to get all that corrosion off of the surface and get it prepped for, for paint. So it's coming off. Uh, the aluminum on these German aircraft that I've noticed, uh, pretty quality material that they use. I find that most of the corrosion that I do find on any of this seems to come off pretty easy. None of it is too deep. It all seems to clean up really nice. So what it ends up leaving it is a slight pitting on the surface, but nothing uh, causing it to be unairworthy. Uh, that pitting, of course, is caused by the aluminum that has been eaten away by the corrosion. And so, again, I'm just going to go back and forth, clean this up. You have to do the whole slat. You have to look at it very, very carefully uh, to get all this off of here. And just that little bit of work right there uh, seems to have cleaned that up pretty good. I'm just going to take a damp rag and uh, wipe that off. And you will see how much cleaner um, that has come out. It's actually brightened the aluminum, which is a good thing. Let me get that off. And basically, we're one step closer to uh, painting this part. And of course, these need quite a bit more work. Uh, there's some dents that have to be worked out. And we're going to do a little bit of filling primer on these uh, slats to make them clean and smooth. Um, but it kind of gives you the idea 
the process of removing a part, determining a way to strip the old paint off it without damaging it, um, doing that process, whether it's plastic, glass, chemical strip, and then once that's finished, inspecting the part for damage, working corrosion out, and then going on to your next process, which in this case hopefully would be paint. So basically, hopefully that answers some questions to people out there. Uh, hopefully we showed you kind of the process because I know people talk about we're not really showing what we're doing so we try to do some of that in this video um, but it gives you a good idea of uh, some of the cleanup part removal and paint uh, stripping on some of these components that concludes our video on the BF 108 hopefully everybody enjoyed all the information we gave keep uh, sending us the questions and comments that kind of gives us an idea of what people uh, enjoy. So uh, keep on watching the videos, we love doing them, and uh, we'll see how the progress continues on the BF-108.